and welcome to everybody on cloud fitness so in today's video we are going to discuss about zero etl so zero etl is a very new word which has come up and it is taking a lot of discussions around so today we are going to see what is exactly the zero etl so when we talk about etl it just means extract transform load that is what we have been doing right we extract the data from the multiple source systems keep it at one place and then transform and load it that is nothing but etl concept now with the zero etl approach coming in what exactly it is it means that you don't need to extract the data from multiple source system instead you keep the data in the source system itself right you connect to the source system you keep the data in the source system itself do not copy it to one particular location keep it in the source system and analyze the data from the source system itself in its original format that is what is zero etl approach so it basically eliminates your data pipelines to an extent extent that you don't need to copy your data you don't have to perform the extraction process right you don't have to extract the data from all the source system and keep it at one place you don't have to do that instead using the zero etl approach using this integration services which will be provided which are being provided by the multiple cloud providers right they are providing an integration service between multiple source systems so that you can actually go ahead connect to that particular source system and analyze the data as soon as it arrives so you don't have now in this case you do not have any latency right in the traditional etl approach what do you do you extract the data keep it at one place and then do any work on top of it right but in this case right that extraction process that extraction data pipeline itself is being eliminated so this is nothing but this is the zero etl approach now basically amazon has also come up with an integration between amazon redshift and amazon aurora right redshift is nothing but it is a warehouse right and similarly similarly aurora is nothing but it is a transactional database now what happens over here in the transactional database as soon as the data arrives what you usually do you kind of push the data to the data warehouse and then you kind of perform your uh, you know analytical queries or whatever uh, you know work you have to do on a data warehouse that is what you do but in the zero integration approach what is what is going to happen is there is no data pipeline between aurora and redshift right as soon as the data arrives in aurora redshift integration aurora and redshift integration will actually help you to analyze the data using the redshift itself so this particular diagram that you show on this that i'm showing you on the screen is very helpful to understand what is exactly happening right so this is nothing but it is a zero etl replication right now you can actually run your complex analytical queries on the redshift itself as soon as the data is written to the database transactional database right now this will of course reduce your uh, you know presentation layer time now this is something that amazon has came up with right now similarly there is an integration between apache spark and amazon redshift as well right so earlier what used to happen is whenever uh, you 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 have to copy the data from redshift to the s3 bucket and then you can uh, you know uh, do any work on the data but in this case where um, you have apache spark and amazon redshift right integrated together developers can actually directly access the data from spark to the redshift itself right now similarly gcp has also come up with the zero integration between your big query and big table so you can directly access the big table data directly through the big query itself in the gcp integration that it has come up with now similarly you know databricks has also come up with the you know the direct queries which it can uh, do with the help of the jdbc connector so uh, this is the entire concept of the zero etl whatever i have spoken that is a, even in this uh, particular slide that you can uh, see on the screen you can pause it read it through so that you have even better idea of what i have said and i have few links which i will share uh, with you that will help you to understand uh, you know how this zero etl uh, process is coming up also now when we talk about the zero etl what what is exactly going to happen with this, this zero etl so what is expect expected is now if you start implementing as 
we proceed with this implementation of zero ETL, probably we will have less data pipelines or no data pipelines at all, or we will have less number of the data pipelines itself, right? So you would not require to store your data inside the data lake at one place because now you can directly query the source system itself. Now, similarly, the usage of the ETL tools is going to reduce because now ETL tools, because this concept of zero ETL itself eliminates the usage of ETL tools to quite an extent. And you will also have a real time processing because the moment the data arrives in the source system, you can actually query it. You don't need to wait for your data pipelines to process because right now with the zero ETL, you, uh, we, we might have less number of data pipelines or no data pipelines at all. But does this mean that it is going to solve all the problem? Probably not. And as we evolve, we are also going to see how it actually works out. From this standpoint, from the standpoint of today, we can actually see that when we implement the zero ETL, what is going to happen, right? We will be left with very limited data transformation capabilities, right? Because right now what we are trying to do is we are going directly trying to connect to the source system itself and trying to process the data from the source system itself. Now, here we are definitely going to lose transformation capabilities to quite an extent, which were uh, when we had data pipelines, then most of the data cleaning stuff we were actually doing through the data pipelines itself, right? Now, so this point number one will actually show its effects because we will limit ourselves to performing very less data transformation. Now, similarly, lack of data governance, we might have lack of data governance because our traditional ETL processes, right, had built in controls and safeguards to ensure the quality and integrity of the data that is being transferred with the zero ETL, we don't have any hands in it. Right now, similarly, uh, right now, I understand that, uh, you know, multiple cloud providers, they are coming with the integration, but with, uh, you know, how flexible it will be to integrate with n number of data sources, we don't know yet because we do have integration coming in for, uh, you know, four or five sources right now, but how uh, flexible it will be to integrate with, uh, you know, the different sources. These are the few drawbacks as well, which we can see at this point. Uh, so this is pretty much that I wanted to cover in uh, this particular video of the zero ETL. I hope you like this particular video. Do remember to like, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you so much.